morning from St. Thomas Episcopal Church and School in San Antonio, Texas, and welcome to Morning Prayer for the morning of Monday, June the 3rd. This is Right One Monday. Today, let's pray for peace on earth. Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem. In the Anglican Communion today, we're praying for the Diocese of Izo and the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. And in our own diocese this week, we're praying for St. Philip's in Uvalde and St. James in Del Rio. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for David, our bishop, and for Mike and Allie, our priests. And as always, from wherever you are, please bring your own concerns, intentions, and thanksgivings to prayer this morning. Before we get started, I'd like to thank all of you for your very kind comments and prayers for us. We appreciate it more than we can tell you. We don't usually get a chance to respond, but we read every comment that comes in and we do very much appreciate them. So just letting you know what a blessing that you are to us. So let's get started on page 40. O oh, send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me and bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. And on page 41, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of His Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open Thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth Thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. And on page 44, let's say the Benite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him, for he cometh. For he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. We have two psalms today, and the psalms are wide, quite wide apart. Uh, we, our psalms are Psalm 41, that's on page 641, and Psalm 52, and that's on page 657. Happy are they who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and keeps them alive, so that they may be happy in the land. He does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me. When will he die and his name perish? Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their heart collects false rumors. They go outside and spread them. 
All my enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. A deadly thing, they say, has fastened on him. He is taken to his bed and will never get up again. Even my best friend, whom I trusted, who broke bread with me, has lifted up his heel and turned against me. But you, O Lord, will be merciful to me and raise me up, and I shall repay them. By this I know you are pleased with me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast, and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from age to age. Amen. Amen. And Psalm 52. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor, a worker of deception. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt, O oh, you deceitful tongue. O oh, that God would demolish you utterly, topple you, and snatch you from your dwelling, and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble, and they shall laugh at him, saying, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God for ever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done, and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Let's go to our readings. You'll remember that last week we were reading the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy, and we are going to go now and read the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, or the churches, and it's not church in, it's churches in Galatia. Galatia was actually an area, not a city. And um, I don't know why I never connected these before. I never did, which is uh, kind of silly of me. Um, and then when I was doing the research for today's morning prayer and then, you know, for the next few days, I was like, I was reading about this and I was just like, oh, how silly I am. Um, the province in Rome, so there, Galatian, as I say, Galatia is an area that had started out in kind of Asia Minor and then the Roman Empire, took, as they did really almost everywhere around there, they took it over and it became a province of Rome. It currently, by the way, is, is like much of these, these areas that we talk about in Paul's letters, it's now in a part of Turkey. But it um, was settled originally by people that were not Greek and, uh, or, or Roman. It was settled by people, by Celts. So the same, the, you know, the, the ancestors of the same people who settled Galatian Spain and Scotland, Ireland, Wales, um, and then Brittany in France, all these people are of Celtic origin. And so they had a different language, they had different customs than the Greeks did. They became, over time, um, settled and became more Hellenized, more, more Greek, if you will, but they never completely lost their more Celtic outlook of life, which I think is very interesting. So Paul went to them, to this area, and established churches in this area, and this letter is to these churches. Um, that are basically of Celtic origin. So, um, we can talk about the themes of this letter. And one of the biggest themes here, um, which makes the letter kind of interesting to try to date, but he's talking about, is it necessary for the Gentiles to obey the entire uh, Mosaic law, or the laws of the Jews? Uh, specifically, is it necessary for the Gentile men to be circumcised, to be Christians. Paul was of the opinion, no. And there was a council in Jerusalem for, to which Paul came back from one of his missionary journeys and attended this council to settle these questions as to how did Christianity look when practiced by Gentiles and practiced by Jews? And that whole, is it a separate religion of its own or is it part of Judaism and how is it done? 
How do you do Christianity in the first centuries of the church? So this letter addresses that question and of course I shouldn't say this but it's kind of true whenever you get two or more scholars together there's always an argument um, because they're going to see things from different points of view or they're going to have they're going to bring different thoughts to bear on on the subject and so some some scholars say that this one was actually written before that council which would date it as one of the earliest letters that Paul would have written because he doesn't mention the, the council in here some think that no, it would have happened afterwards, and the council would have been something that was so obvious that everyone would have known about it, so he didn't need to mention it, um, whichever way. This probably was one of Paul's earlier letters, if not the first one that we have. So that's a little background on it. We'll talk some more about it as we go along. We're going to begin the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians and uh, with chapter 1, verse 1, and we're going to go through verse 17. Paul, an apostle sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me, to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaim to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, so now I repeat, if anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you received, let that one be accursed. Am I now seeking human approval or God's approval? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still pleasing people, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin, for I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it, through a revelation of Jesus Christ. You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the Church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many among my people of the same age, when I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who had set me apart before I was born and called me through His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son to me so that I might proclaim Him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me, but I went away at once into Arabia, and afterwards I returned to Damascus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle for today is the first song of Isaiah. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And let's go to our Gospel reading for today, in the Gospel of St. Matthew. We are in chapter 13. We are going to begin with verse 44 and go through verse 53. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. 
The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? And they answered, Yes. And then Jesus said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left that place. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second canticle for today is the Song of the Redeemed. Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And let's say the Apostles' Creed on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And let's say Suffrages A on page 55. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. And our collect for today is the collect for Proper Four, and that's on page 177. O God, whose never-failing providence ordereth all things both in heaven and earth, we humbly beseech thee to put away from us all hurtful things and to give us those things which are profitable for us through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And on page 57, let's say the Collect for Peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on page 58, our prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that every one might come within the reach of thy saving embrace, so clothe us in thy spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. And on page 59, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and hast promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. 
Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let's take a few moments for reflection. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to Him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.